What gives reptiles such a bad reputation? Is it because they're really slimy, slithery, and sneaky, and they make you want to go ew whenever you think about them? Well, maybe that's what you've heard, but first, you should get to know some of the lizards and snakes we live with here in the Mojave Desert. And when reptile expert Alex Heindel shows you some of his best specimens the way you would never get to see them in the wild, we think you'll change from saying, ew, a reptile, to wow, what an amazing creature. Why don't we start with one of my favorites and one of the most unusual reptiles that we have in the Mojave. This is a Gila monster. It is unusual because it is the only venomous lizard in North America and most people never get to see one. Now there is very good reason for that is that this lizard spends most of its life underground because it doesn't have to eat very often. This animal has a digestive system that is so good, so efficient, that it allows itself to survive for a, up to a year on three or four good meals. So as a result, it just can stay underground most of the time. In fact, the only times we see these out is when they're actively looking for something to eat or it's during the mating season. Now, if you notice, the big, big head on this guy, but if I'm going to turn him over here, now please don't put your hand in front of his mouth because it has a, a bite that can be quite painful and it is venomous. But if you see these bumps or these bulges along the lower jaws, those are the venom glands. And so when this animal bites, the venom works into the bite like, like the saliva in your mouth and it causes intense pain and hopefully it leaves a very unpleasant memory in whatever it was this lizard bit so that the next time that it comes across one it simply leaves the Gila monster alone. These are called the beaded lizards and as all of you have touched them you can feel that sort of beaded texture on the skin. They're little sort of bony projections in the skin, something we call osteoderms, that give it that beaded look and feel. How can it survive on three to four meals a year? Excellent question. The reason that you have to eat so often is because you need to maintain a constant body temperature. That 98.6 keeps you warm. Most of the food you eat gets burned up just generating that heat. Reptiles are cold-blooded, which means that their temperature is going to be the temperature of their surroundings. So on this table, if it's 75 degrees, and the lizard stays here, he will be 75 degrees. Most of his food goes into repairing tissues and allowing him to grow and whatnot. And as a result, he doesn't need to eat anywhere near as often as you. Now, most of these lizards will eat more than three or four times a year. But if they're forced to, or, or if they get a really big meal, it may be several weeks or even months until they're hungry again. So it's just one of those attributes that makes it kind of easy for uh, this fellow to live in the desert where he does. He can dig burrows if he has to, uh, to uh, produce a shelter of his own, or he'll get down in like a desert tortoise burrow or some other hole that's big enough for him, and he'll just sleep. Now, a lot of people think these only come out at night. No, mostly they're active during the daytime, but because they're underground so much of the time, we don't get to see them, and people think, well, they must only be active at night, but that's not true. What do they eat? This is an animal that mostly eats small rodents. He'll get down into like a, uh, a pack rat nest, and he'll find the young pack rats, and he'll eat those. But he also has a very good sense of smell, and as he's walking across the desert, if he's hungry, he will very often smell the eggs that have been laid by other lizards or snakes and that have been buried, and he'll dig them up and he'll eat them. Now, this, again, these claws, he's a very good climber. This fellow can climb up into low bushes or even trees 
and get after birds' eggs and the young birds in the nest. So he's going to be eating things like small rodents, small birds, eggs, and he does quite well with that. How did he get his name? He got his name probably because the, the early sightings of these, when they were first found, was down around the Gila River, which runs from, uh, from New Mexico through Arizona and empties into the Colorado. And because he was uh, big and people thought he was venomous long before they, uh, they knew about him, they called him a monster. So he became the Gila monster.